Lesson 6, Injuries. First we have bleeding adult video. Prepare for someone with an open wound. Begin by covering the wound with a sterile gauze pad and applying direct pressure until the bleeding stops. If blood soaks through the first gauze pad, put another one on top and press harder to apply more direct pressure. Okay, here we go. It may take several minutes for bleeding to stop. Do not remove any gauze pads. If the bleeding does not stop, call 911 if you have not already done so. Continue to care for the person and monitor for shock. So I'm going to check your circulation, okay? Okay. Okay. I need you to replace my hand right here. Very good. Just like this? Yeah. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Once bleeding is controlled, check for circulation beyond the injury. Note the temperature and color of the skin and ask the person if there is any tingling or numbness. Any numbness or tingling of any kind? Um, uh, no. Okay. So I'm just going to get a bandage. Okay, I want you to just hold that for a moment, all right? Okay. Place the end of the bandage on the dressing at a 45 degree angle. Continue wrapping the bandage over the dressing. Thank you for holding that for me. No problem. Thank you. You're a good assistant. Thank you. You'll get this done. One. Okay. Once the dressing is covered, roll out the remaining length of bandage. While holding the bandage, use the index finger of the other hand to split the bandage in half, moving it down and underneath the limb. Bring up the two ends of the bandage and tie them in a bow or knot. Most a tourniquet, a device placed around an arm or leg to constrict blood vessels and stop blood flow to an open wound. A tourniquet may be used when life-threatening bleeding exists and standard first aid procedures fail or are not practical. Life-threatening severe bleeding that cannot be controlled using direct pressure. Now as far as a tourniquet is concerned, the only time we should use a tourniquet is in the third bullet point. Multiple people with life-threatening injuries who both need care and we need to stop bleeding for one person that's injured and go help another person that's really injured. That's the only time that we should use tourniquets. Common causes of nosebleeds could be trauma, exposure to dry air, dry or cold air, high blood pressure, and could be certain medications could also cause nosebleeds. To care for a nosebleed, have the person sit leaning slightly forward Pinch the nostrils together until the bleeding stops. We would only need to call 911 if it was severe bleeding and the bleeding didn't stop in 10 to 15 minutes. Burns. Burns can be caught. There's different types of burns. There's a thermal burn, removed from the source of the heat. There's chemical burns, remove contaminated clothing if possible. The chemical is liquid, flush the area area with cool running water for 20 minutes or until EMS personnel arrive. If the chemical is a dry powder, put on gloves and brush the chemical off the skin as much as you can, then flush the area with cool running water for 15 minutes or until the EMS arrive. If it's an electrical burn, turn off the power at its source before helping out. Cool the burn using cool water okay, for at least 10 minutes. If cool water is not available, okay. A cool but not freezing ice pack. We don't want to have really cold ice packs. So put a towel or something in between the ice pack and the burn area. Cover the burn loosely with dry dressing. Okay, If dry dressing is not available, a clean dressing or plastic wrap may be used to cover the burn, but only do so loosely. Some fact or fiction about burns. Put ointment or butter on a burn to soothe the pain. That would definitely be false. 
Okay. Placing greasy substances on a burn is not effective for relieving pain or promoting healing. Actually, it can make it worse. Sunburn is a type of thermal burn. That is false as well. Sunburn is caused by overexposure to UV rays and is a type of radiation burn. When a person has experienced an electrical burn, you need to be prepared to give CPR and use an AED. That is true. The electric current that causes the burn can also cause a cardiac or respiratory emergency. Apply ice to burn to a burn to cool it. That is false. Never use ice to cool a burn. This can cause more damage to the skin and blistering. It's important to monitor for shock when a person has been burned. That is true. Burns of all types can cause a person to go into shock. When a person has been burned by a chemical in powder form, you should remove the chemical by flushing the area with cool running water. Fiction. When a chemical is in powder form, first remove as much of that chemical by brushing away with gloved hands or a cloth. Then flush the area away with cool water for 15 minutes or until the EMS arrive. When a person has experienced an electrical burn, you should, go, you should not go near the person until the electricity has been turned off at the source. That's true. Never go near the person until you are sure the electricity has been turned off at the source. To cool a thermal burn, use cool or potable water. Fact, a thermal burn can be cooled running cool water on it. Muscles, bones and, bones, and joint injuries. Signs and symptoms of pain, swelling, bruising, and an inability or unwillingness to move the injured body parts. The injured body part is bent, crooked, or otherwise deformed. A popping or snapping feeling or sound at the time of the injury. A grating feeling or sound when you're moving the injured body part. What should we do? We should call 911. A broken bone is protruding through the skin. That would be a compound fracture. The injured body part is bent, crooked, or looks deformed, so maybe a dislocation. There is moderate or severe swelling and bruising, and the person heard or felt the injured area pop or snap when they were hurt. Also call 911 if the person hears a grating sound when attempting to move the injured body part. If the person cannot move or use the injured body part at all. The injured area is cold and numb. The injury involves the head, neck, or spine. Make sure we don't move the person. The person is having trouble breathing. If the person is showing signs and symptoms of shock, we call 911. The cause of injury th makes you think the injury may be severe or that the person may have multiple injuries. And it's not possible to safely or comfortably move the person to a vehicle to get them to the, see a doctor. General first aid care is the same is the same for all types of muscle, bone, and joint injuries. If you have called 911 and are waiting for the EMS to arrive, have the person rest without moving or straightening the injured body part. If the person can tolerate it, apply ice. Do not attempt to splint the injured body part at all. If calling EMS is unnecessary, we can use rice and to treat the injury ourselves. So we need to rest the injured area as much as possible. Uh, immobilize the injured area, so it's an elastic bandage or a splint to limit the motion. Apply ice and a dry towel for about 20 minutes. And then elevate as best you can the injured body part. Try and reduce swelling. When we elevate, we elevate the injured part above our heart. The mechanism of injury. Fall from height, traumatic injury involving machinery or vehicle, a blow to the head, entering a shallow body of water head first, a broken safety helmet, or loss of consciousness may be brief. Behavior similar of that of a person under the influence of alcohol or drugs, so if they're confused, stumbling, memory loss, they get sick, head, neck, or back pain, partial or complete loss of sensation or movement in the body part, Bumps, bruises, or depressed area in the head, neck, or spine. Blood tinged or clear fluids leaking from an ear or the nose. Bruising around the eyes or behind the ears. Impaired breathing. Blurred vision. Seizures. If you think that a person has a head, neck, or spine injury, call 911. Approach the person from the front so the person can see you without having to turn their head. Tell the person to respond verbally to your questions rather than moving their head. Think the person has had a neck injury? 
Have the person remain in that position until the EMS arrives. Do not take off a helmet. The person is wearing a helmet. Leave it on. Leave them still as possible until the EMS arrives. Signs and symptoms of concussion. Thinking and remembering. This person may be confused, dazed, or out of it, or having trouble remembering recent events. Some physical signs. The person may feel nauseated or vomit, complain of headaches, and have light sensitivity. Emotional. A person may seem really irritable, they're sad, or they're agitated. And behavioral. This person may sleep more or less than normal. Children may also show changes in their eating or playing habits. A person has sustained an injury. That could cause a concussion. Even if the person is not showing any signs and symptoms of a concussion, the person should be seen by a health care provider. Putting it all together, you hear a worker in pain, you stop to see what they're doing. You see we have severe bleeding. The guy's been cut. Make sure before we do any provide any care here that we ask for consent. And obviously the care would be to apply direct pressure with gauze pad making sure we have gloves on ourselves. Kids are playing outside. You come inside, tell one of your friends it's cut and bleeding. Same situation. Now it's a younger kid, so we don't need necessarily consent, but you can still tell them who you are. Tell them that you're going to help out. Um, if mom or dad are in the area, you could ask them for consent.